All right. I'm not sure if I'm, hey, everybody, Jacqueline here. If I'm live, it takes a couple of minutes sometimes. So while we're, while we're loading up and making sure that we're live and no hitches, I'm waiting for my colleague to come on. We talked about this week. And we talked, um, the last thing we talked about was finding the time to study when you just don't have any time. Um, and, and I hope that you all remember what I told you. Where do you find the time to study? Everywhere. Five minutes here makes a difference. Five minutes there, study while you eat. Study, study while you do the laundry. Study while you uh, walk across campus. It's important not to waste those minutes because you want to have choices with of how you spend your time. And the most important thing that we talked about was that there is only one commodity, one single commodity that you cannot regrow, replant, replenish, uh, get back, make make you know make up and that reality is that it is time once time is spent it is spent and you cannot get it back that poem that I had such a hard time trying to remember for you last week and just uh, my little reminder I am still suffering from the very last dregs of this walking pneumonia so I'm not sure exactly how long I'm going to be able to stay on tonight, but that poem I couldn't remember. It's the sundial poem. It's, um, I did look it up for the fact. So, and I posted it on my Facebook page. So, um, feel free to go over there and take a look at it. But it's, uh, let me tell it, see if I can remember it after a few days. But it's by my finger cast, divides the future from the past. Before it lies the unknown hour in darkness and beyond my power, beyond it, uh, I can't remember, the hours are spent. One hour alone is in thy hand, the hour on which the shadow stands. Right now, this is the time that you have. So we're live now. Um, I hope everybody joins us. We're, this is an exciting one tonight, and I sure hope that you guys are um, going to log in and take advantage of this. This is Jacqueline's tips and tricks to become a better studier. The things to do to get the most out of your material. We talked about study learning styles, uh, you know, auditory, visual. Um, uh, kinesthetic, oral, um, did I say that auditory, visual, kinesthetic, oral? Okay, I got that. We've talked about that, but that's not what I'm talking about tonight. Tonight, I'm going to tell you the tips and tricks that I learned as a student. Now, I was a student, I, I'm, I'm one of those students that took a, a few decades to get through college, right? But I also took many other training classes in between. I've done a lot of study. But there are some tricks and tips to get the most out of what uh, the material that you have. And I want to share some of that with you. Um, so I told you last week about finding time to read the study material, you know. Every professor says, you have to read the material in the book. Well, you do. You do need to read the material in the book. Because a lot of times, what they're going to be teaching you about directly correlates to the book. And there may be stuff that they never mention in their lecture that's in the book. So you need to read it. But if you're like me, um, I love a good novel. Boy, good fiction. A good murder mystery. And that's why I write those. I love them. I can, they just, they keep me on the edge of my seat and I can keep going for hours and hours. But sometimes a textbook just can't do that. I just can't. I just don't follow. Okay. So. Read the end of the chapter. 
flip over to the back, to that last page of the chapter, the very end of the chapter, almost always the chapter is going to end with a summary. Uh, for example, if it's a summary and you're you're reading about the Civil War, um, the, your summary is going to maybe talk to you about, you know, um, you know, Lee and Grant and da 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 da, da, da. You know, all these the various battles and stuff. And you're going to go, oh, how am I supposed to remember all that? You know, in the summary, it's going to tell you the main points from that chapter, right? So you read that summary, which is usually the last paragraph, sometimes the last two. You read that summary and then you pick out in that summary and it should be pretty easy based on the key words that you're told, like um, interestingly enough or however or um, because or uh, in spite of, you know, some words that draw attention to statements because of those words you know when it's mentioning something you know because of the um battle of i can't even remember because i didn't i studied world war ii i didn't study civil war so let's talk about world war ii a little bit um let, let's talk about um Dachau and there's ter those terrible places so you want to know about those places, but you, how in the world are you going to remember those names and dates? How do you know which ones matter? Go look at the summary first. Look at the summary, pick out those key phrases, and then flip back through your pages and look for those words that are mentioned in the summary. Look for those names that are mentioned in the summary. Match up your summary with the place in the book, in the chapter, it's talking about what's in the summary. Guess what? You just got the main a main point. Okay, so you go through that summary and you pick out all of the main points from that summary. Guess what? You got the chapter because the summary is the chapter, right? Remember we talked about a thesis um, or a a paper, you know, an essay that you write that has an an introduction and a conclusion and some filler paragraphs in the middle to talk about your information. Well, that conclusion is where you draw together all of the important stuff from those, those summary um, um, paragraphs that you wrote, right? Same thing with a book. The end of the book, they summarize. I mean, the end of the chapter, they summarize. They summarize what the chapter was all about. Don't waste your summary. Take your summary and run with it. It is a great study hack, a great study tool, okay? Something else you're going to find in the book, a couple other things you're going to find in your book. And it depends on the textbook, and it depends on the, uh, it depends on the, um, the subject a, a lot, okay? But let's take a look at all of the pictures and graphs, okay? You turn a page, and they've got a graph in the corner. And it's got a, a, you know, graph 1A, and it says something. Look at all of those pictures. Go through and look at those pictures and find the part in the book that refers to that picture or refers to that graph. And Because they, the writers of the book, felt that that summary, I mean, felt that that picture or that graph or whatever, is important enough to have included a picture of it for you. So you know that it matters in that subject. So you look at all those pictures and you find where in the book, you know, refer to um, graph 1A, refer to graph 1B, refer to picture 2C. And then once you, you, you do that, and then you look at that, those little descriptions about those pictures and graphs, you go back and look at that summary and you look at the notes you've taken because of the summary and the places you found them in the book and you figure out what those graphs and pictures have to do with the summary. How do they fit in with the summary? Okay. For those of us who are more kinesthetic, who are more movement involved, who aren't just visual, 
this is the kind of moving around, moving the pages back and forth that, that our brains and our hands need to absorb material. Okay? Go read the summary of your chapter first. Trust me, you are going to find answers in your summary. Um, now, I'm going to talk about another hack that's not really a hack. Everyone knows about this. Oh, ah, sorry. Hard to breathe. Um, you know, that they're called a lot of different things now, but they used to be called Cliff Notes because it was made, they were made by a company called Cliff. And they were basically summaries of books that you have to read for a class, usually a college class. Sometimes they're called spark notes or sometimes they're called, they're called other things. They're online, they're in bookstores, they're, they're everywhere. But they're little uh, synopsises of the characters, of the content, of the important um, um, key information in each chapter or it, it, in a book. Reading those notes, going to, you know, searching on the internet for, you know, a study guide for Middlemarch by George, Ell by George Eliot is, does not replace, does not replace reading the book yourself. It does not replace it because inevitably there's going to be stuff that you, you are going to pick up on that the professor is going to say that spark notes or cliff notes or, you know, whatever these study guides are, aren't going to get. These study guides are exactly that. Study guides. Use them. There is nothing wrong with using them. It is to There is totally a problem with using only them and not reading the material. Okay. Okay. Now. Let's talk about movies or documentaries or things like that. They can be a great study aid, but you have to be careful, especially if it's a movie. If you're going to watch a movie um, based on a, based on a um, real life event, um, understand that if this was a movie written for the big screen, or even the little screen, there's going to be some creative license taken there. Not everything they're going to show you is true. Okay. That doesn't mean that every movie is made with incorrect facts. You need to look and see who's making that movie um, or that documentary. If that documentary is made by a reputable place, for example, um, and I'm not sponsored by any of these people, but I'm just saying it. Um, National Geographic. National Geographic is a stickler for facts. So if you have a documentary and it's made by or sponsored by National Geographic, and it is about a subject that you're studying in school, then you can you can rely on that. If it is a movie. I, and I'm just going to use, for example, Hurricane Harvey, because I live in Houston, and I know that there have already been some documentaries coming out. There have been um, some some great op-ed op articles, even just this past week, in our local newspaper about the damage caused by Hurricane Harvey. There are still people who um, haven't recovered financially from Hurricane Harvey, and then the pandemic hits. Make sure that if you are going to watch and rely upon a documentary or a movie, that there, there, there's no disclaimer. Look for your disclaimers. There'll be a disclaimer towards the end of the movie if it's not, if it's not um, a truth, if it's not 100% truth, it, there will be a disclaimer that will say something to the effect of, and I'm going to read you, uh, I'm going to read the, the top the words. Well, maybe I'm not going to. I had it right here. But um, a disclaimer that says, the people, places, and things based, you know, um, in this book are fictional and non, this is not based on any one person fit fact or 
or thing. If there is a disclaimer like that that lets you know that that not er that the story does not contain 100% truth, no matter how good of a story it is, understand that you don't use it as a study guide. Don't don't do it. Um, I knew somebody who um, uh, used as a study guide. Let me, let me find this disclaimer. My let me find my book. You know, I I refer to it quite often, and my books are fiction. Um, and as such, here we don't go. I don't. I haven't been well, and so things have been, got moved around. I don't know where he is. But um, if there is a disclaimer that says, you know, that sorry, we have a friend visiting for just a second. Hello. Um, if there is a disclaimer that says, you know, this this is you know not all not all, all although this story is based on true facts or, or true events. Um, not all characters are real or based on real, you know, any kind of disclaimer, don't use it. Okay. So my example, I'm sorry that I was, that I wanted to use, um, was, uh, a, a friend who rather than read the book Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen decided that she would just watch a movie a popular movie that was out at that time of Pride and Prejudice. The movie Pride and Prejudice has been, has been redone and reworked many, many times. And it's one of my favorite books. And I have three different copies of that movie. Uh, I mean, three different versions of that movie, but I have a friend who had to write a, um, a descriptive of that novel, had to write a, a her opinion about some things. And um, she talked about something that happened in the movie. Yes. That thing that happened in the movie isn't in the book. She got caught red-handed not reading the material because she made an assumption. Not true. Now, you can use that movie as an example. If you also read the book and you can point out the differences between what is written in the book and how it's portrayed on film. Um, there are so many examples. I can't even, um, I don't know if any of you have ever seen the book, uh, uh, seen the movie Princess Diaries, right? Ah. Princess Diaries uh, by Meg Cabot. And all about this girl who finds out that she's a princess in this non-existent country. Um, but the books, the books, the characters are based in Greenwich, in Greenwich, New York, right? Movies, they have them based in San Francisco. I don't know why. I don't know why they felt they needed to do that, but there must have been a reason. So they changed the character of the story by changing where it is. It's not Manhattan. It's not downtown. It's not... It, it's not, you know, the, the the streets that are, you know, you know, first, second, third, Houston, you know, Harvard, you know, it's not those streets. It's an entirely different feel. And if you've only watched the movie and not read the book, then you've totally uh, missed the mark. Okay. I will tell you that there are certain movies out there that are written exactly, that are played almost exactly, almost exactly down the line to the book. If you've ever read the book Holes and seen the movie Holes, the book and the movie match up very, very exactly. But how would you know that unless you read the book and then watched the movie or re watched the movie and read the book? You have to do your work, people. These are study hacks. These aren't cheats. And cheating is not okay. Okay? Plagiarizing, copying somebody else's work is not okay. Paying somebody else to do your work, that is not a hack. That is a cheat. Okay? 
if you have paid somebody else to do your work that you're getting a grade for, you are dishonest. You have violated the student code of every college and university out there. So you know it. These are study hacks. These are not cheats that I'm telling you. Okay. So I've got you, I've got you a, a few of the, the best ones out there. Okay. Now. Okay. Textbooks. We talked about it before that when you buy a textbook, it is your book. If you want to write notes in the margin, more power to you. I write notes in the margins of all my books, not just textbooks, novels. You know, I read something in the novel and it it it, it kicks a thought in my head or it makes me wonder about some character or something. I make a note and I also quite usually um, use my little flags, flags, you know, uh, page flags um, so that I, I don't lose those notes. Uh, down the road. And sometimes we're poor. And so after we're done using a college textbook, we go to the bookstore and we sell it back so that another student can have it purchasing a used, cook, a, a used textbook. I'm going to tell you how much I love used textbooks that a true student has used, who has underlined and highlighted and commented in, in the margins of the book. That is not cheating. That is taking advantage of someone else's notes. But until you look read the book, you don't know. You don't know what, what their notes are. When you go to purchase your books, you may just want all brand new books, and that's fine. That's fine. But I'm going to tell you, don't look down upon those used books because those notes in the margins, in the in the covers, the front covers, the back covers, especially if you happen to get the book of someone who really, really studied, you got a gold mine. You have a gold mine. Okay. Okay. Previous tests and homework. Where I'm talking about previous tests and homework, <clears throat> um, yeah, they save you money too, big time. Okay, um, but where I'm talking about previous texts, uh, previous tests and homework, many times a professor is going to, especially homework. Uh, and here's a hack. Oh my goodness. Maybe this is the one I should share, but I'm going to share this one with you. If you come across a professor who is about to retire, maybe he's got one, one semester left or maybe two, he's about to retire. I can tell you that probably every bit of assigned work that he gave you to do, every piece of homework that he gave you to do, is going to turn up on a test. Just a tip. There's nothing wrong with taking an old professor. First of all, they their knowledge of wisdom is deep. But if they're if they're if they've already given their notice and they're about to retire, <clears throat> they're not going to spend a lot of time making new new tests for you. A lot of times their tests are going to come straight from the homework. Study your homework. They're giving you that homework for a reason. I had a particular class. It was an appreciation of Shakespeare. And the first, and he showed us video clips from um, plays, Shakespeare's plays through the, throughout the, the coursework, the entire coursework. For every play we read, there was a video clip of that play. And we had a, we had a mini quiz like three weeks in and I realized that the mini quiz was based 100% solely on the scenes that he played the video clips for. Pay attention. Don't skip class because you never know. 
if he played a video clip of a scene out of out of a particular scene out of a play, I can guarantee you that that scene was the is the only scene in that on the test that he was going to test you on. So mark it in your book. Read the whole play because if you don't read the whole play, you have no reference. You, you don't know what you're talking about. But when you're studying for the test, make sure you've marked what portions of the book or the story the professor played a video of because that matters to the professor. Attention. Okay. Okay. Here's another study hack. That's not really a study hack. Um, but it is definitely one that I learned uh, along the way. Go to class. Okay. Go to class. We talked about this in time management a couple of weeks ago that, you know, I had this TA for this one class and he said, it doesn't matter whether you come to class or not. My tests are going to come straight from the book. Da, 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 da. What I didn't appreciate was the back and forth discussion between the students. Go to class. You are going to hear other people's thoughts about the, the same things that you read. And they may have grasped something that you didn't grasp, but you can tell when the professor likes it. You can tell, yes, uh, Miss Jones, you really hit it on the nail. That is exactly what this story is about. Take notes, write down the, the things that the other students say. Take notes and especially take notes if the professor seems particularly interested in what they're saying. Okay. Um, another reason not to ever um, skip class, I'm just going to tell you, I had to take, I didn't have to take, I took an introduction to theater class. Um, I enjoyed taking those kinds of classes because I'm a writer and it helps me, it helped me understand and visualize the scenes that I'm writing. And we had this class from, it was a visiting professor who was um, a, a director down at a theater in downtown Houston. All right. So a pretty big deal um, director, but it was in an auditorium, you know, with a stage and he, he would teach up on the stage. And because it was in an, in an auditorium, you can imagine that as, as the weeks went by, fewer and fewer people started coming to class when they realized that we're going to, our tests were going to be all about the books, all about the plays that we read, right? First of all, they missed all that banter, that back and forth banter between the students and the professor to know what the professor's really, really thinking. But I'm going to tell you, sometimes you can pass a class merely by attending when a lot of other people don't. Because when I took that class, that theater class, every time there were less than 10% of the amount of students taking the class, uh, attending class that were enrolled in the class, and he would just basically do a head count. He says, oh, I'm supposed to have 250 people in this class, but I see only 25 of you today. He would have those of us that were there sign our name on a sheet that would pass around the room. And for everyone, everyone who was there on those days that you never knew when those days were going to come, he would give you an extra uh, 10 points on your final exam. I didn't need it, okay, because I went to class every day. But there were a couple students that, and and I remember when, uh, when we turned in our final exam, you know, we did our final exam in the classroom, and then we turned in our final exam, and one of the students yelled out, okay, and don't forget our extra credit. And a couple of the students, what extra credit? I don't know anything about any extra credit. And that's when they found out that the extra credit was merely coming to class. Go to class. I'm just going to tell you, you, not only are you going to learn from the discussions that are had between the professors and the students and 
you know, what the, you know, for example, if you don't go to class and you've got a class where the, where the professor is going to show you video clips and you don't know what video clips he's showing, if you don't go, and those are the video clips that you need to study for the class, you have lost. It may not sound like much of a hack. It really might not, but, but it really is. Go to class. Okay. Um, have I covered every, have I covered everything on my list? Um, I want to know if any of you out there have some study hacks, some really great study hacks that you can share. And if you do, write them in the comments because you don't want to leave them for, I mean, if they're good, share them. Just share them, okay? Um, there's no, there's no, it's not cheating to learn from other students. It's not cheating to learn from other students. I can't repeat that enough. Okay. Another hack. This one, um, I was working with a student uh, that I'm tutoring earlier today. And she mentioned this, and I want to mention this. You live in a digital age. You're going to school in a digital age. Almost everything that is out there is available digitally, including helps for writers. Um, there's a program. Um, there are several programs. Grammarly is one of them. Um, my mind has gone blank. There's another one that starts with an S. And these are basically programs that you can use as you're writing. And they have basic storage space for you to put all of your reference notes. To put, um, for example, this particular student that I'm working with earlier today has to write her paper in an APA format. And she's going to use the same book, the, the textbook. Um, required by the professor, she's going to be using it over and over and over again. But rather than having to retype up that APA format of the, of the name and title of the book every time, there's a place in these programs like Grammarly where you save that information. No, I'm not sponsored by them. I'm just telling you that they're out there. Don't hesitate to use those. those. Um, there's uh, one called Grammarly, one called um, Sync, uh, Synchronicity or something like that, that singular, I don't, I don't remember. I'll try to find it for you. But you live in an age where all of this technology is at your fingertips. So if you don't use it, if you don't use the technology that you have been gifted with, and I do mean gifted, Gifted by God, gifted by your parents, by yourself. You've had to pay money for that computer. Use the heck out. Find, just, just put in your search engine, Middle March by George Eliot, and see what comes up. See what happens. You might get something good. Um, it, is, it is essential that you use your resources. That's not a hack, people. That's just a truth. Use your resources. This computer that you have, that you're sitting behind right now, or this phone or this tablet, is much more than just a machine. It is a lifeline for you as a student. Okay? I know. Oh. Um, you should never buy somebody else's paper. Oh, no. If they... If it's a thesis, it'll be in the library and you can read it all you want to get ideas for your thesis. But you don't buy other people's essays. That's cheating. That is cheating. You don't buy other people's work. You might can read it to learn from it, take notes. No, 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 no. Not only anytime you use work, that someone else did and you don't give them credit for it, that is plagiarism. If you buy a paper or you buy homework from somebody else, that entire assignment is plagiarism. Plagiarism can be a felony offense. Not always, but it can be depending on situation. So, 
cannot emphasize enough that there is no way that you can get by without doing the work. There are ways that you can get by with being more effective. In and those are the hacks, okay? Um, set your schedule up. Set your schedule up so that you're not studying on the weekends. If you know you're not going to do it, don't pretend that you are. Use your time wisely elsewhere. You can do that. You can. I know you can. Mm -hmm. I know you can. All it's going to take is the devotion. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I am going to have to let you go because I'm having trouble breathing. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry that we didn't get our whole hour in, 36 minutes, but I'm going to let you go. Next week, um, hopefully things will be a lot better. And next week, we're going to talk about how to deal with getting a handle on your parties and your friends and the activities on campus, um, because that can be a great, um, a great distraction to study. So we're going to talk a little bit about that next week. But thank you so much for logging in, for listening to me ramble and ramble a little bit about some of these study hacks. But I do want to know if you have some good study hacks, share them. Share them with us because everybody can learn. And you don't stop learning when you stop going to school. You stop learning only when you shut your brain down. So don't shut your brain down. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end this stream. Love you all. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, Jackie.